Got it. Hi, I'm BD Dalton from Rockfine Group and founder of The Bull Ring, which is Birmingham's answer to The Dragon's Den and Shark Tank. It's an entrepreneur's showcase that allows people to show off their businesses, talk to investors and possible future partners, and even clients, either over Zoom or in person. What's in it for you? One, if you're an entrepreneur, you're gonna learn what else is out there, what problems people are running into, and also what investors and clients are looking for in new products. If you're a person that wants to invest, you're gonna see what's happening out there and what type of companies are looking for partnerships or things that they can be invested in or actually receive money for. The Bull Ring trains you up a week ahead of time to walk through your five minute pitch. You get to do that with the other pitchers. You get to see what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. Then on the day, you get your five minute pitch to sometimes 75 to 100 different people that will either know more about your company as a client, as a potential partner, or even a potential investor. Our pitchers have had the opportunity to partner up with Microsoft, Amazon, some of the big gaming names, and even some potential European big boys. If you're just somebody from the general public and you wanna know what's happening here in Birmingham and the wider Midlands, then you'd come along to see what's happening for businesses that are startup or scale up. Hello everybody, welcome to the Bull Ring in April. I am BD Dalton. And we have a great show for you today. We've got three great pitches, three great bulls, and we're going to have some fun. So Lauren, if you could put up the slideshow, we'll start and tell everybody if this is your, your first bull ring, we'll give you a little bit of a, kind of catch you up to speed, but it's all about being a showcase for entrepreneurs. Um, if we go to the next slide, I'll walk you through a little bit of this, the bulls. So the bulls are here. Instead of the dragons, which are attacking our, our presenters, the bulls are here to help us 
accentuate the good that's coming out of the pitchers to take them to their next level and help. We've had people that have been bulls from Sony, from Microsoft, from Warner Brothers, from all this and amazing backgrounds and amazing people that get great feedback. So if whether you're a business, an investor or somebody that's looking for investment, you're going to get a lot of great feedback and ideas today. These are some of the companies that we've had go through here. They're, they're all over the globe. They're all sorts of sector agnostic. So we've got companies that were selling stuff that were doing social media, having all sorts of fun, but, and it doesn't always have to be, we've had food on here, we've had tech, we've had all sorts of stuff, including manufacturing. So move on to the next slide, please. And the beauty of Zoom is that we have had pitchers and bulls from all over the world, including these countries, and many, many more. So it's spread our wings for investors and for pitchers and for a viewing audience. So move on to the next slide, please. How does it work? How does it all come together? So we wanted it to be a little bit different than just this aggressive backwards and forward banter that happens with the, the bulls or the sharks on Shark Tank. So let's, let's move on to the next slide. So I get to lead this instead of having the, the panel of bulls have that fight back and forth. Their timed pitches, they're five minutes. It's very difficult to have five minute pitches and Mike will talk for a little bit in a second about pitch perfect practice. The bulls give feedback and today, the first time we've let them have it, the pitchers will get one minute response time. Only one minute. So try to keep it as simple as possible pitchers. So if Paul or Gaynor or Alex says something, the, the pitchers will now get one minute to respond. Only one minute and then I'll jump in. So we want to keep it so that you get back to your, your investment, back to your time. So we want to thank you and make sure that that all happens. We have fun here. So this is about being investable or not investable. This is, this is kind of our thing. So what we do is we have polls to make sure that it's not just the bulls giving feedback, or your ideas, but you get to see if you're an investor or if you're somebody that's engaged with businesses like this, you get to see instant feedback from you guys, the audience. So Lauren, if we could test out one of the polls, that would be amazing. Yeah, there you go. Perfect, if you can answer that, this is your first time attending the bull ring. Have you, how many bulls have taken part in it? It was on the slide, but I didn't say it. And then which company is the one that's behind the bull ring? Okay, give it a few more seconds. Perfect. Okay. There we are. Wow, so have you, this is your first time attending. So actually we're getting to that spot. We had a 50-50 last time, 28% of people, this is their first time. So welcome to your first time here at the bull ring. Yes, it's 30 plus, actually we're moving closer to 40 plus now. So the people that are there are anticipating the future here. And then the last one, I can't see, Lauren, so let me scroll, what's um, the... Which is the company behind? Oh, and look at that, Amazon. Yep, Jeff Bezos called me yesterday and asked if he could sponsor it, but we said, no, we'll just keep it as rock fun. So we're having some fun here. So if we could get rid of that and move on to the next slide, that would be amazing. So I'm gonna, before I bring on the bulls, I'm gonna have Mike just talk one second about this. You're going to see people that have come in that are good entrepreneurs that we hand over to Mike to hone and tame and launch in a new direction of how their presentations go in our pitch perfect practice. Over to you, Mike. Okay. What well, One of the hardest things here is five minutes. This These are businesses that are created. Some are younger than others, but they're created and the investors, uh, sorry, the inventors uh, are so passionate and so excited about it. Could talk for days on it. Five minutes. So it's a five minute pitch, not 10, not 12, not 22, five minutes uh, of engaging content of stories, what's in it, what the return on investment is, and just as importantly, how am I going to connect with you? Who do I need to be talking to? It's not just about cash, it can be about smart money, it can be about non-execs, it can be about finding collaborators or even employees. And this is why it becomes a million dollar, a million pound pitch every time, whether that's the number they need financially or it's just what they're going to achieve over the next 12 months, two years, five years of trading. This is why it's so important. Five minutes, what we do, how we work it, and why you want to have a conversation with me now. That's what Pitch Perfect Practice is all about. And that's what these guys have gone through. And I know they will be um, 
pushing your buttons to get you interested to say, I like what you're talking about there. I know somebody you should be talking about because that's the definition of success from today, a connection that matters. Perfect, thank you, Mike. Okay, now I want to introduce you to our bulls. The first bull is our finance guru, um, Paul Heaven. Paul, if you could just give us a little bit of background on what you, what you do and what you bring to the bull ring, please. Sure, yeah, I'm a kind of seasoned bull which makes me kind of barbecue ready, really, I guess. But um, my, my, my experience and background is that <clears throat> I'm a corporate finance professional. So we work with owner managers who are looking to sell or buy or raise finance for their business. In the context of today, obviously, I'm looking at it from an investor's perspective, be that a high net worth individual, a family office or an institutional equity investor. So my feedback will be, based upon what I know to be the kind of thing that they're looking for and any kind of um, traps that they might set or issues that they might um, uh, want to focus in on. Perfect. And we had we had some success about three months ago that Paul helped one of our clients um, that had pitched in the bull ring, uh, brought a half million pound investment back in. So it was, it was great. One of the guys that pitched from us for us back in November. So it's, it's been great. So next up is our small entrepreneurs and startup focus is Gaynor Matthews from my Nexus. So over to you Gaynor and tell us what you're bringing to the table and what you're looking for. Yeah. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, I'm the co-founder of um, my Nexus ESI. Um, I'm an entrepreneur at heart and I've created a, a business simulation app that measures skills and capabilities uh, of the entrepreneur, to, entrepreneur potential. Um, our app can be used for personal development, building the right team, and even help with investor fit. My area of expertise is startup. I've been in the game a long time. Uh, I love getting an idea off the ground and seeing it on its way. I'm also an early stage investor. Um, I find this uh, process of that, this part of the investment um, uh, uh, round is um it exciting it's often where the best opportunities lie and you know and i find that really rewarding seeing a startup get off the ground and evolve um, at that early stage and i think that's really important these days we don't give enough um credit to the early stage space there's not enough money here uh, and you know trying to do something about it but uh, i love the ball ring and looking forward to the uh, pictures today awesome thank you so much Kenner. And um, next up, I, I, we can give him the name, the baby-faced assassin. So um, here's here's Alex. Alex is, is great in the, in the corporate finance space. This is his first time being a, a bull with us, but knows lots and lots of stuff about corporate finance, raising finance, and is a startup business owner himself. So over to you, Alex, to tell us what you're looking for in your background. Thanks a lot for that. I've never heard it spoken like that, so I, I won't be forgetting that soon. No, thank you for inviting me. I was on this couple of months ago now which was super useful for us pitching for my business kaiku so yeah i run one of the, one of the co-founders at kaiku an ai scouting tool um the last few years have shared deals with about three to four hundred different vcs we focus traditionally on emerging vcs so corporate uh, corporate venture capital family offices and smaller vcs um I spent a lot of time overseas uh, lived in france a lot of time in the spanish ecosystem as well for startups so a lot of overlap and a lot of our team are over there now and also manage the venture side of Beck, Birmingham Enterprise Community, which some on the call may know, uh, fairly leading regional accelerator now based in Birmingham. Um, and we have a small number of companies we hold equity in as well, which on that side um, is responsible. So yeah, no, looking forward to this range of businesses. Um, if there's anything I can do to help overseas, other funds, um, you know, looking forward to it. So thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. That's fabulous. So Today, what's going to happen is a five minute pitch. So we'll have Georgina come up first from my shoots. We'll give her the chance to line up her, her slides um, and she'll do that. She'll get her five minutes. I'll be generous by about 15 seconds if she goes over. And if not, then I jump in. Um, then she'll get feedback from each of the bulls. And today, like I said, we're gonna add a little twist in here. So we're gonna start off with Gainer today on my shoots. So. Gainer, you'll have your questions. Georgina will get one minute of feedback. Then we'll move on to Paul, one minute of feedback. Then we'll move on to Alex, one minute of feedback. That's how we're going to run today. So if we could get Georgina on screen and get her slides up, I will get my clock ready to start the five minutes countdown. 
Okay, Georgina's up and then slides will appear. Georgina's sharing her screen. We're having fun here. Awesome. Georgina, from my shoots, your five minutes in the bull ring starts now. Okay, good afternoon. I'm Georgina, the founder of My Shoots. My Shoots is an app for shoots, clubs, and ranges to market, organize, and connect with their clients, whilst allowing brands and businesses to connect with their customers better. The mission of My Shoots is to bring all gun sports together worldwide. I'm an ex-sales agent for shooting clothes, and during this time, I could see that there was many problems and needs that needed to be addressed. I've come into it from a commercial and business perspective and not the shooter's perspective. I've seen traditional retailers already dying before COVID and more fun channels of distribution are wanted uh, by brands and businesses. And in, in this niche, there's no target marketing either. I can see it's time intensive for shoots, clubs and rangers to organize their shoot schedules. And there isn't a scheduling platform to schedule these days on and selling and buying shoot days is problematic and current social media platforms make it difficult for the community and industry. And there are too many communication channels to organize these days through. So the solution I've come up with is creating an all-in-one platform for brands and businesses to get traffic to their own online shops. Promoting local businesses is targeting within the luxury sector and it makes life easier for shoots, clubs and ranges. It works by every club having their own profile, inviting their clients to their profile, uploading their shoot dates and events and schedules and allows the brands and businesses to uh, have promotions, competitions and upload their videos. The world market worth is around 40 billion. It's a growing market and in the US, one million more people shoot through COVID due to being an activity solo and outdoors. And there's a 15% rise in female shooters in the US. In the UK, game meat consumption was up through COVID with an 8% increase. And this market on its own is worth 114 million. 17 million people shoot in the US in some form and 600,000 in the UK. I've received £30,000 worth of government grant, grant funding up to date to make me investor ready, market research, business plan, IP audit, IP access grant has filed the trademark in five classes in the UK and put a contract in place to bring brands and business on board. Staffordshire Business Innovation Grant has put 37% funding towards my MVP and Staffordshire County Council have funded the latest five year financial projections. I have West London Shooting School piloting the MVP and the value proposition to them is they save £50,000 in not having their own app built. They save on their yearly marketing budget by being able to uh, promote their shoot events through this platform. And they want it to become their CRM. And they currently have 32,000 people on that CRM and they would all go onto this platform. I clearly have competition, but it's all much more technical based than what I'm offering. Nobody's offering a scheduling platform. Nobody's trying to segment the, the demographics of this sector like I'm trying to do. Why me? I have industry experience. I dream to build something big. I have passion, mission and motivation and plenty of grit. Um, I need investment now to be first to market. A safer platform is required by industry and community. Gun sports generally lacks technology. There's a huge opportunity of picking up exhibition football shortage by uh, promoting new season launches through this platform. I'm a very good, strong team. I have an ex junior course access to my tech advisor in Australia. My sports tech advisor is in North America. I have two Olympians on my team as my industry experts. They both um, own um, shooting uh, businesses themselves. My um, growth um, advisor is in London and well connected within the tech scene too. I predict my revenue to be a million in year three and nine by year five. I plan to exit and my current ask is 125,000. The use of the funds were to build, is to build the technology to be more scalable than my MVP towards my current team and staff and marketing and PR. I'm set up on seed legals and I already have my SEIS shorts approval in place. Thank you for listening. If you've got any questions, please. Perfect. Four minutes, nine seconds. Great honed presentation. So um, Gaynor, we'll put, we'll put you on and could you give us some feedback for Georgina? You on mute. <laughs> <laughs> You're on mute. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I forgot what I said there. Right, start again. Um, great pitch, Georgina. Very clear, very precise. 
uh, understood the ask, which was really good. Um, you came across very strong. You know your road mind. I can tell that from um, your persona on there. Um, very interesting proposition. Um, don't know the space, but I like the fact that you're saying first to market. That is a scary thing for some people. But I, I love that because I think, yeah, first mover advantage is always a, you know, a really good, strong um, uh, position to be in. Um, competition, I always find that as uh, people always put competition up. Um, it looks a little sparse there. You know, you say you're very different from them. But, you know, it's what will it take them to catch up with you, I think, is what you need to be honest about here. How quickly can they turn this on? Have they got the resources to build what you built uh, as quick as you? So always give a little bit more to that, more depth to, to the competition. And don't be scared about that because it's good to have competition. Um, what is the revenue model? That's one of the questions I would like to know. Um, and I think um, your advisors, lots of advisors, have they got skin in the game? That's another question for you. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so my one minute you, you can respond. You can respond for one minute, so you get to go now. Okay. My revenue stream is the B two B for the shoots, clubs, and ranges. They are all on freemium, and they get a yearly upgrade subscription. And the uh, brands and businesses can be monetized in many ways. That's up for discussion, but that could be subscription as well. And in year two, I plan to have B two C for users as well. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Great stuff from Gaynor. Good feedback from Georgina. Let's go over to Paul for your questions, please. Oh uh, yeah, I think um, <clears throat> as is um, often the case, Gaynor picked up on a lot of the points that I would have raised. So, I mean, I thought it was an excellent presentation. I thought it was rounded. I thought there was you, you, you covered off most of the the um, the key asks. Um, I mean, I think because yours is an affinity based marketing program, this is probably less important than an issue I'll raise with one of the other pictures later on. But you need to show how that 125k is going to be spent, even if it's in broad terms, what you're going to be using that money to invest in. Um, I agree that it needs to be a little bit clearer and sharper on the revenue model. Um, I think I think you um, on the growth market potential the idea that you talk about how big the US market is is good and, and interesting but it isn't clear to me how, how how you're going to attack the US market clearly that's a big big market for guns um, but and then rather oddly you talk about the UK market in terms of game meat consumption <laughs> <laughs> which which may put some people off i've got to tell you that, that there's a, there's a danger that that might put people off but um overall i thought it was a good pitch it's clear what you're trying to achieve and um a bit like gainer really i think because you've got this early mover advantage in a market that isn't hasn't if you like gone out of its way to absorb tech then um i see i see the i see the compelling proposition i think you you the timing that you go to market i'd be tempted to get the um uh the london shooting club is it um west london shooting club on board make sure they're embedded and you've got their members using the app as you described quite rightly as a crm application uh before you're really ready to go to market to raise funding because then you've got a a kind of fully fledged proof of concept but overall got it understood it and, and i think it works it works well yeah, thank you cool specific responses or is, was there anything that you hadn't answered before georgina for paul i can't think of that there wasn't a response for me there was there no nope. okay perfect thank you paul over to alex no again thank you very much i think it you know interesting space i imagine uh, one that quite a few of us are learning about. So again, it's it's good to get a macro feel of that, which I did feel we get we got through the deck as you went through it. Um, I was asking myself to know a little bit more about the product. Uh, maybe that was just me, um, but a little bit more focus on what that's looking like and, and how far through you, you're on that MVP at the moment. Um, I always worry when I hear no direct competitor. Um, again, when you when you see the slide, it's, you know, very macro and it's good. I appreciate that's for people that are not so accustomed to the space, but want to know a little bit more, I think, um, in terms of the direct competition, but I appreciate more of that comes out in, in conversations afterwards per se. Um, again, just echoing some of Paul's points there that knowing more about the growth markets is great um, from a scalability perspective. Um, but again, beyond that, what, you know, I'm sort of asking myself, are there any other growth markets you look, you look at? And then I suppose, how does it operate overseas and cultural, you know, differences? I appreciate 
you can only get so much in a, in a deck, um, but I was curious to know more there. Um, obviously a very experienced team uh, and, you know, a really good, you know, range of advisors in there as well. My main question was, is 125 enough? Um, who is working full time at the moment? Um, you know, how are you going to scale that team? And just going back to Gaynor's point, uh, more about who has got skin in the game at the moment. So would you need more? Um, and again, if you're looking at the US, is 125 going to do it? Probably not um, from that point. But overall, very interesting, well sequenced um, pitch. And, and thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Perfect. So, Georgina, any, any bit of feedback there? But it seemed like everybody kind of understood the pitch and knew where it was going. Yeah, do you want me to give me, you want me to give out feedback? If you want to, yes. Yeah, my, the ask for 125 is to fit around the SEIS at the moment. So um, my tech advisor has always told me to go out and get, try and get 300K to begin with. Um, but then when you've got Innovate UK and other advisors telling you to stick with the smaller amounts to begin with, that's where we are at 125. So it's 125 plus really. That's perfect. There's not, there's not a hard and fast rule, right? Some people will say one thing and one another. It's, yeah. I appreciate that. It is. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. Thanks, everybody. Okay, now let's see what the audience thinks. Over to the poll, please. There's the poll, and then the slide goes up. So do you understand what my shoots does? Do you understand what they're asking for? And do you under do you think it's investable or not investable? And the beauty of WhatsApp, I'll do this. If, if you know anybody that wants to do business in the States, um, Rockfine, we are running a mission, we're calling it an expedition to Seattle, July 19th through 21st. If you wanna know more about that, get in touch with us after the show. Um, we're doing our presentation Q and A tomorrow at uh, 9.30 to 10.30 over Zoom. Uh, we've already got 17 people that are attending that. So make sure you come along if you're thinking about doing business in the US. So Lauren, can we see the results here for my shoots? Perfect, so do you understand? There it is. Do you understand what the ask is? Very, very clear. And then the last one is, do you think it's investable or not investable? Look at that, 75% essentially. So three quarters of the people think that it is investable. So that was great stuff. Thank you very much, Georgina, for your pitch. Much. And through the beauty of WhatsApp, um, Mike, Mike has made a suggestion that, and I, I agree with it. Instead of having um, now Daniel, sorry, Georgina, you were the first, you were the first to test out our new feedback scenario. Um, we're going to try a new feedback scenario, which is after the bulls have done their feedback, if Daniel, if you will feed, kind of give your answers or responses to the, the bulls overall. So we don't get the same question asked three times or same response and you feel kind of Guilty, but thank you very much for putting up with the, the first time, Georgina. Um, and you did very well in your, your responses. So let's bring on Daniel from Herb, please. If we could make sure that we get you up on the screen. Hello. Perfect. Daniel yeah. from Curb, your if you're all ready, then your five minutes begins now. Hi everyone, my name's Dan and this is my company Curb. We are unleashing the power of local shopping. So what's going on? Small businesses are competing on national platforms. We only need to look down the high street, we can see that stores are dying, the high street is massively suffering. But what's the reason for this? Well, national competition is extremely high. Now, since the internet has come out, the competition, the national competition, they have far better resources. So it essentially makes these small stores relatively insignificant. Whereas if we go back 30 years ago, or well, before the internet was out there, the local competition was relatively low. If you didn't have a good store, usually you couldn't blame it on footfall. You just generally didn't have anything particularly great to sell. So we hear a lot about trying to help out the high street shop local, but we want to come up with a proper solution for it. So what we did is we dissected the key aspects of online shopping. So those were convenience, delivery speed and choice. Now, 80% of consumers actually wanted same day delivery and 61% of those expected it within one to three hours. So we came up with a marketplace solution for the customers. So that looked like instant delivery. So more, uh, more flexible purchase returns and delivery options than a standard e-commerce or physical alternative. Longer opening hours. So where we're digitizing the high street, you might have somebody who's selling out of their house, out of their home. You might have somebody who's just keeps their store open, but they're not open to the general public in terms of footfall. That means people can get access to products later on in the day. 
And then also choice. We want to be like the Amazon of local shopping. We're trying to really build up these local economies. We're trying to add as many products, as many stores as possible. So what that looks like for a store as well is an omni-channel solution. So this is a seamless experience for the sellers. So they can add it to the channels that they already have on the go. So whether they're selling on Shopify, Amazon, or they've got a physical store or social media, we can just add this to that seamlessly. We're also looking to introduce a launch program. So we think this is going to be really key in actually introducing entrepreneurs, people who are looking to smoke test products, get them onto Curb. What we want Curb to be is that local marketplace where people think, right, I would be silly not to put my products onto Curb because I know I'm going to get access to all of those extra local eyes. So what we've done so far to validate the idea. So we've ran a series of beta days. So we basically held these together with Sellotape. But what we did is we went onto our platform, our Instagram. We would say, look, we're going to local shopping center. Who wants instant delivery? Who wants something? Now, we didn't have the product. So people would actually, they were going onto the, the website of the shopping center. They were finding the stores. They were then finding the products. And we'd then go into the store, try and find a product and deliver it within an hour. But what it proved to us was that actually there was this de demand for this next hour delivery. There was also this demand for convenience. People didn't really want to think about stuff in advance anymore. We were doing this on Saturdays. People were actually going to buy or were trying to buy clothes for like a Saturday night. So it really did show that the demand was there. So we've actually, for our roadmap, we've had to split it into two processes. Phase one, we actually have to digitize the high street. Right now there is physical sellers, obviously, but there's also a lot of online sellers which could actually make the most of the digital high street, like we said. So we've got to create this local marketplace with a most local approach. That means making our brand be recognized for local shopping. But what we don't want to do is just people to consciously have to think, okay, I'm going to curb because I want to shop local. We need to have as much product on there as possible so that it makes sense to them. Once we've got this in place, we can introduce phase two, which is the instant delivery marketplace. And this is where we can tap into gig economy locations, create the habit for instant delivery. So in terms of the timeline for that roadmap, we validate the concept so far. We're in the process of just releasing our local marketplace. We're recruiting stores and trying to get that brand recognition. Uh, next year will be the expansion playbook. How can we grow what's worked so far? And then introducing the launch program. And 2024 is going to be the full solution. So the instant delivery marketplace and then the software solution for stores. In terms of the market, it exceeds 100 billion per year. We've actually split it into three locations for our research. We have 80 UK towns, 23 UK cities and 10 major cities. Our target acquisition within those is 350,000. So it's about one and a half to two percent penetration. We'll then be looking at foreign markets and also further markets in the UK. In terms of the team, we've got myself. So I've got over nine years retail experience. I've managed stores. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen the problem. My co-founder, Sam, is more in the technical space. He's used to dealing with startups and stores. In business development, we have Connor and Lewis. We've tried to surround ourselves with the right level of advisors. So we've got Mike, who's a serial entrepreneur. He's taken two of his companies through IPO. We've got William in finance and Tim in marketing. We've also just gone through the incubator program at Birmingham Enterprise Community. In terms of our ask, we're looking for 150K investment. We're looking for an advisor with marketplace expertise. And we're also looking for a partner who's possibly scaled and successfully exited a startup. Beside that, we do have the SEIS and the EIS available. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much. Bang on five minutes. I know you have your clock on there. You're doing very well. Could you, could you tell? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. You, you hit it bang on. That's, that's what it's all about. Efficiency, man. So here we go, Alex, we'll start off with you. I know we, we kind of have a crossover here, but I know it's somebody you should have a, have a good conversation with. So over to you, Alex, for your, and Daniel, we'll wait until we're done with all three. So if you have any notes that you want to write down for responses, then we'll, we'll go with that. All right, over to you. Thank you, no pressure at all, Mick. Um, thanks. I mean, I'm, I'm biased. I've seen this, you know, develop and and, and, and how it's moved on in, in, in a number of months now, but, you know, it was, it, good storyline you know it was good to see how things have progressed and i think fair to say a little bit of repositioning as well um i think a few things that i was asking myself was what first is publicly we know a lot of these apps are closing at the moment a lot of overspent and you know the sort of customer acquisition costs and giving a lot of you know freebies and free money away at the moment um so you know if you do read in that space or if you're a little bit more biased there i am asking myself a little bit more on the usps 
um, per se, because I know you're trying to cover an expanse, and I don't think that's a bad thing at this stage. Um, but I just worry from a market perspective, um, you know, seeing what is out there at the moment. It's not to say it can't happen, because I know you focus more regionally, which I do think there is a gap. Um, but I suppose what I'm saying is I think that could have come across a wee bit more, um, per se. Um, so not at all. I think you definitely on the traction side can always bring out more. You know, I know there's a lot of really good things. The team's definitely shone through, which, I, you know, I know we had a chat about as well and I've seen them and executed. So that was that was really strong. Um, but in terms of what you have done out there, how, you know, what you have developed um, and really that presence, you know, how many cities have you tried, the geographies and everything like that. Similar comments of how I made earlier, um, you know, where is this going to go? The roadmap was good, you know, again, but I, I always want to see that scale. Um, market sizing is one of those things we, we can all throw numbers around, but is it realistic um, and translating that into the roadmap a little bit more in line with product, in line with funding? And again, is 150 enough? You know, that, that is always the question there. There are a good number of people on that slide. Is it sustainable? But I think all in all, you know, interesting space to say the least. I, you know, I think there's more you can bring out um, from what you're doing there. Um, but, you know, a really good start. So Perfect. You. We'll, get your, we'll get your feedback because I know you have some answers for that. Um, but we'll go over to Gaynor on this one. So you're next. Hi, got my mute off this time. Thank you. Uh, yeah, good presentation, Daniel. Um, interesting, engaging. You kept me interested all the way through. I do have a vested interest in a marketplace. So uh, this was uh, absolutely spot on when I say agree uh, to speed and convenience is key for the future. We've seen that evolve quite a lot recently. Um, so I like that. Um, Always the cost of delivery and, and, you know, getting that right to the customer um, and, and the, the financial model. You don't mention about that. Uh, I'd like to understand more how you're making money out of it. Um, but also talking through the customer experience, you know, what's that looking like? Um, yeah, everything rushed, but not everyone's sit rushed either. So there's a balance here. Um, can you scale on that uh, ability to be rushed or should you be just a little bit better than the rest? So I'm, I'm not quite convinced. I've seen other shopping apps, as, um, you know, it's just been mentioned. Um, it's a, a crowded space. So what makes you different? My question is, what makes your team better than the rest? You know, that's what I'd like to see come out here. I know you've got some really skilled people on there. But, you know, passion on that. Why are you going to survive when these others haven't or are struggling? Um, but yeah, really around the financial model as well, uh, scaling this and making money. But good presentation, uh, very interesting, and we must uh, link in afterwards. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, over to you, Paul. Thank you, Gaynor, for the feedback for Dan. Yeah, as always, being third, a lot of the questions I would have raised have been raised, but let, let me let me pick up on the, the key bits. I mean, for, uh, you made the comment that you wanted to be the Amazon of local shopping, and by the way, I'm a, you know, I'm a massive fan of buy local. I mean, I think this works maybe in towns and cities. I can see how it might, but I think as the point's been already raised, you've really got to focus in on some of the issues regarding the numbers because it's not rocket science. I know that picking up um, you know, a bag of bananas and getting that delivered is just going to have a lower margin content than picking up, um, I don't know, a Chanel handbag or something and getting that delivered. So you've got to figure out how that, that the metrics work in terms and not just figure it out but 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 make sure that it's clear in the pitch as to how that's going to work i mean you're suffering from the the classic business to consumer challenge here in that you need content to drive users onto the platform and you need users to persuade the providers of content you know, of goods and services to to gravitate towards it. Um, and in that regard, I've got to tell you that the thing that I thought was the greatest flaw of all in the model is that I just don't see how 150K gets you even close to being able to reach to an audience. Um, and investors will will be very nervous about that. I mean, they'll have all invested, they'll have all lost money on a business to consumer play that was simply ran out of steam, was unable to reach its target audience with the initial funding that it raised, or maybe even the second or third subsequent round. <clears throat> what the way, the way to get around that is to um, is to try and talk to your investment audience about um, how you're going to drive traffic to the site at a very low cost, maybe using the leverage of the retailers that you're working with in a, in a town or a city. But even then, you've got to, you've got to pad that out with some metrics. Our trial indicated that the, the, the 
click rate or the cost per or you know the cost per bag or the average bag size was and this is how much margin so you've got to play some metrics into that to convince investors that it's a viable model um so i think the the big the big one to me is i need to be persuaded that 150k would get you even close to reaching a consumer audience in a single city never mind uh, on the global scale that you have ambitions perfect thank you to the bulls okay daniel go ahead I'll, we'll give we'll give you two and a half minutes go for it you get some you get some feedback time okay all right thanks for all the feedback um I'm just going through my notes now so in terms of how big it can be um well look we we the reason why we put out those potential markets is that originally as this plan started out we were just purely looking at instant delivery but we realized that actually it doesn't it doesn't work at the moment and this is where we said we need to digitize high street so we believe that actually if we can i'm not muted am i good right if we can start in the smallest scale possible and this is where it comes back to your question paul about the size of the investment we're trying to test this as much as possible to make sure that it works in smaller scales so that then we can look to expand and we can raise more at the right time and then at the right price for us. That's why we've gone for the, the small level of investment at the moment. The financial model, we'll be looking at commissions. We've worked out how much it costs to do a delivery. It's gonna depend and when we're looking at places like Deliveroo and stuff, they've spent millions on their algorithm which works out how much it costs to do a delivery. No, there's even waiting times for delivery in terms of how much it ends up costing further down the line. Now, obviously, we're not at that stage yet and we can't pretend we are and we haven't got millions of pounds to spend on an algorithm. It doesn't make sense. So that's why at the moment this instant delivery isn't ready. But where we can actually really try and tap into the market is to create this digital economy. So we're going to look at like commissions on sales, subscriptions for stores. If we can make it so that we're almost like a one stop solution for any store locally or any store who's just trying to launch to get to a, a local marketplace, that would be key in obviously helping us to get to that phase two and really get that growth. I think that's also comes back to what, what our difference is compared to other stores. I mean, I, I see a lot of people say about supporting local stores and all of this. I think a lot of people as well, when I, when I see them actually asking this or saying about supporting local, they're trying to, force habits upon people um and what we know now is that people are shopping online people like the convenience everybody's got less time now than they used to have somehow but that's just the economy that's the community that we're in at the moment so what we're trying to do is really create a hybrid so that digital high street and that may means that you can still go down to your local high street but also you can just order it on your phone and that's where we want it to get to but we have to almost uh, play into the current habits and create a, a new solution which works with that rather than just going with the old and forcing it. Um, now, was there any anything that's, else that I have? That's, that's where we are. I think you, you did well. We will have our, our breakout groups afterwards if people actually want to ask questions or or come back around. But I think that, that was it was a good response. But I think that you can see from everybody it's that honing of the proposition and, and explaining where the the 125 or 150 is going to be spent. So it's it's good. So you got that. So let's see what the audience thinks. So if we can put the poll up, Lauren, please. Oh, it's coming. There's there it is. Do you understand what curb does? Do you understand what curb is asking for? Investable or not investable. We've been asked a lot of times now um, to, you know, how, how do we access more stuff after the bull ring? So we actually have a peer-to-peer -peer business accelerator that's starting up in May. So if you want to know more about that, you've got a business that wants to scale, um, wants to have access to our friends, the bulls, and further afield, um, tell people about us. So... Lauren, could you share the screen? Look at that. Do you understand what Curb does? 92%. Look at that. Same 92% said they know what they ask is for. And then investable or not investable. This will be the one I have to scroll down my own. 50-50. Well, it looks like the US elections. It's amazing. So it's fairly close there. Um, so 50-50, they know what it is. Daniel, thank you so much for your presentation. Thanks for the feedback from the polls and from everybody in the audience.
Uh, let's bring on the third pitcher, please. So Nathan, from Live Tech Games. Hey, good afternoon. I'm just waiting to have access to share my screen. Perfect, we'll get you there. Thank you very good. much. Very good. Paul, you'll go first on this one and Alex will go second and Gaynor goes third. So Alex, Nathan, resetting. Did you see a presentation, BD? Hit, um, there you go, okay. I think Live Tech Games, now I can. So your five minutes starts now, Nathan. Perfect, thank you very much and good afternoon, everybody. My name's Nathan, co-CEO of Live Tech Games. Live Tech Games is a mobile gaming company but we only build live appointment to play games where we're in control of when players can participate. This creates suspense and excitement for our players, but also new commercial opportunities for advertisers. So let me tell you the headlines. We have a unique business model that de-risks the traditional game publisher approach, but maintains huge profit potential. We've built two games thus far, becoming the number three ranked game in the App Store charts. We've signed multi-million pound commercial contracts, securing 3.25 million in revenue for the business. Across four funding rounds, we've raised 4.2 million pounds to date. And we're also backed by ITV, receiving an investment of two and a half million pounds last year. And ITV are actually reinvesting at this current round too. And finally, we have a really talented team of 15 experts that have come from all across the industry to help us build out that technical platform. And why have we done all this? Well, it's because our mission statement is to build best in class technologies that create these exciting digital experiences that people actually look forward to being a part of. Everything we do nowadays is so habitual, whether it be scrolling on Instagram when you're bored or you go to YouTube because you've just got nothing better to do. And actually it's time that something excites us to take our phones out of our pockets rather than to feel boredom and dwell time. The way we achieve this mission is through building games on our five pillar formula. Our games are always live, played against real players, simple, accessible, take less than five minutes and you have the chance to win free prizes. So when we put that formula into practice, I'm really excited to show you our first two games. Firstly, Rashambo Live, a simple yet exciting rock, paper, scissors knockout tournament where we have prizes for the winners and Word Search Live, where players go head to head to find the answers to simple quiz questions in word searches, and it's the fastest player that wins. So Rashambo Live achieved some amazing results when it was launched last year, including the fact that it delivered a three times better cost per install than the national average and click through rates that were around seven times better than the industry trends. And then that second game, Word Search Live, is currently in beta, and we're excited to start acquiring players in May. So these games are just the start of our exciting roadmap to come to become the world's number one destination for live tournament gaming. But let me tell you about what makes our business model special, not just our products. And it's because our format of games is the only format that works perfectly alongside television shows. Imagine at the end of a TV show, the host says, thank you for watching today's show. You can now, you have the chance to win a thousand pounds in our live game that starts one minute away. These TV shows already have captivated audiences that we can convert directly into game players. And this is because the games are incredibly simple and therefore suitable for the general public, not just for traditional gamers, but for broadcasters and brands, we extend the time that a viewer spends with advertiser messaging and imagery in a fully interactive and trackable way. Our games perfectly solve broadcast challenges. So we sell our games to TV channels and streaming services first, ensuring that each game's paid for upfront and we generate profit on every single game. But because we own the game IP, we can then reskin the game without the broadcaster logos and relaunch these games in international geographies. And in every region we launch, we re-monetize games further with advertising and in-app purchases. This model removes the risk of expensive development, but it maintains the profit potential of an international games publisher. The next stage is to continue to sign more broadcasters, duplicating the model, which in turn creates additional secured revenue and game mechanics owned by us that we can relaunch and re-monetize. 
And whilst we've been on the lookout for new broadcasters, we've actually been invited by Universal to travel to Los Angeles next month on a trade mission to figure out how we might be able to work together. And while we're there, we've secured time with Disney, Netflix, and NBC too. So the investment ask. We're currently raising 750,000 pound top up because we've actually signed more commercial deals that we can currently service and we need to grow our team further. Of the 750,000, we've already secured and received 687,000. So there's only 63,000 remaining. We're really proud as a business that 78% of our shareholders have reinvested round after round. And I hope that that showcases that we can and do execute on ambitious plans. The remaining 63,000 is all EIS eligible and we expect it to close in the next few business days. So please get in touch if you're interested. Perfect. Great pitch. We will go over to, who did I say? I said Paul first. So Paul, over to you first, sir. Yeah, just a wow. I mean, the presentation was brilliant. You know, what you've achieved is extraordinary. Um, I know you and I have spoken separately, Nathan, so I do have the advantage of knowing this business in a little bit more detail. Um, and I'm chuffed to bits that ITV did eventually decide to come in on this round. That's really helped. Um, with that kind of lead investor, you, it was never in any day that the round would get, would get filled. Um, it's a great proposition. I thought you presented it brilliantly. Um, I'm struggling to come up with an intelligent observation that will make any difference. It's a great, it's a great product. It's a great pitch. You're in a, a great area of the market. I mean, given that you are going to go over to the States, and I have no doubt this is already true anyway, but BD's got some very good games people over there that we can um, make sure that you're connected with through the, uh, through the, through, through the platform. Um, through the boring platform but i think it's a great pitch great product well well presented and you know well done thank you paul perfect great great feedback thanks paul okay gainer over to you we'll go over to you and then i'll bring in alex last yeah hi um yeah i don't often uh, agree with paul so uh, but he's absolutely right <laughs> um, probably the best pitch i've seen in a very long time nathan you're a natural you are you you ooze um, you know, I want to be involved or straight away. So, you know, keep that up. Um, I've no doubt you, you'll get the money and it will close quickly. Um, what you're doing is so interesting. It really sparked that with me. Um, you know, I remember in the, in the lockdown, you know, when we did the pub quiz every week, how excited we got to doing that. So, yeah, totally get it. And, and I think it's wonderful. You know, is there anybody else out here doing anything like this or is it really, really you? And where did you get that idea from? Because it, it's... It's just wonderful. Um, I think there's going to be so much engagement, you know, with the TV um, channels and stuff like that. You just you know on, on the ITV investment you mentioned, they're coming again, but is there like a revenue share as well? That would be interesting to, to see if they're involved that way. Um, you know, what else can you say? Good luck. I can't wait to watch what's going on. I might go and have a look at the bank account in a minute. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> and joking. Um, but yeah, wonderful. And oh, yeah, how do you, how quickly can you roll it out internationally? That was another question. Sorry for all the questions, but um, yeah, you've, um, you've excited me on it. So, well done. Brilliant pitch. And uh, nothing to change. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Gaynor. Perfect. Over to you, Alex. No, I, a lot of comments to echo. I should also say Nathan and I studied together for four years. So, I've got an element of foresight seeing his previous ventures as well. Um, and equal success and progression. Um, no, really good. I mean, it's not my space. Um, I think the main things that I probably was asking myself was it's a lot of money in a very positive sense of a lot of money that's come in so far and a lot of really interesting and positive contracts that are coming through. But I'm sort of asking what's that gone into from a utilization rate? What's actually come out from a user perspective um, from that side? I kind of feel that was a little bit superficial. Uh, and I'm not trying to say that in a negative way. I'm just trying to say it's not my space, but I do. There's a lot of money for a team of 15. I appreciate there's a lot of developers in that. But where is a lot of that done and where is a lot of that coming out? Um, so, and I think that probably translates into the roadmap's really interesting. The states, as you know, I've got quite a big interest in as well from multiple perspectives. But again, how big can this get even more? You know, what other, you know, beyond the US, where can you go? Um, you know, does Asia come into there, for example, creator economy and gaming down in Latin America as well is huge. 
Um, and I think there's probably a huge, you know, opportunity down there as well. And, you know, my overlap of the sort of work I do in LATAM. So there's a few different things there. Can this be multilingual? Um, you know, so a few different perspectives, but, you know, very easy to follow, very impressive what's been, you know, progressed so far, you know, great team, great backgrounds. And so not much more negative feedback. So not, I'd say constructive feedback I can give from there. So thanks very much. Perfect. And then what, so you're only going for the 60, I mean, you could have your five minutes, but so you're only going 68 right now or six, whatever it is right now. It will, yes. will there be, will there be future rounds? Uh, yes, there will be a, a Series A uh, Q1 next year, but this is, and we can't oversubscribe this round. So it is just the 63 remaining for the rest of the calendar year. Perfect. So if people want to know more later on, we can, we can follow on that, but I'll let you, I'll let you respond back to the bulls, but that was mine is if, if we don't get in on the 63, because that's taken, is there something else that people can participate in if they want to play later on? No, appreciate that, BD. And thank you to all the Bulls for their comments. I mean, um, just picking up on a few of them, Gainey, you talked about anybody else doing this and where the idea came from. And actually, the, the, the origin of the idea did come from a company that existed in the States that did not quite what we're doing now, but something similar. It really caught our attention. The business collapsed because the business model was wrong, not because the product was. So myself and my, I've got a really awesome business partner, Samuel, um, together we kind of went, how do we do a great product but solve the business model part? And that's what we've been doing ever since. Um, you talked about the ITV deal. Uh, yes, so there's the equity investment. We do have a commercial deal with ITV that's really, really valuable for us. Just because this is recorded, I can't share much more detail than that, but it is, there's a really great commercial deal that runs alongside that. And I know you were joking, Gainer, potentially about looking in your bank account, but the 63 is there if you want to take a small slice of that. Um, and then Alex, you know, really fair comments. And I think the really interesting thing that you've picked up on is about cash utilization. And what's important to say is, yes, right now we've taken in 4.2 million, but I have 2.8 of that still in the bank. And the reason that is, is because we always take money before we need it, because what we don't want is to be a stepped business where we grow, spend six months raising money, we don't make any progress, and then we grow again, and then we have to raise for six months. We're always raising in advance, and that's why with all the international work, I mean, I'm sure you know lots of people on this call know how expensive it is to launch in other regions. We are prepared with the cash balance. So actually, of the 4.2, we've still got a lot of that remaining in the bank. Um, and I think that was all the questions. So just thank you for everybody's time. Really appreciate the comments and feedback. And I would be really grateful if anybody is interested in that sort of EIS investment. Um, there's just the 63 remaining and I can send anything over that you'd like to see or we can have a call after this. Perfect. And Lauren and the team, we send out an email after this with everybody's links to the Bulls, to the pitchers and everybody else. But let's see what the audience thought of Nathan's pitch. So Lauren, could you put the poll up, please? Perfect. Sick. I think you should know these by now. Just different picture. And um, one of the things, if you want to bring the bull ring to your town, we're going live again. We've got three live dates, um, June, September, and um, now October. So if your organization wants to have things in the past, we've had um, Barclays, British Business Bank, West Midlands Combined Authority. So if you want the bull ring brought to your accelerator your town your business your whatever it is make sure you get in touch with us so let's see what the poll says here for nathan's pitch there it is do you know what they do pretty good overwhelming there do you know what they ask for pretty specific you got that an investable or not investable i have to scroll down my technical look at this Ooh, that's good 86 percent. very very good thank you so that brings us to, to the end, close to the end of the, the overall formal. So I, I think we, we just keep getting better and better. I mean, the, the Bulls are getting very, very good at their jobs and our pitchers are stepping it up. So um, if we could have Paul, Gaynor, Alex, just a generic roundup of good things and one thing that everybody can think about or work on um, from each of you. And then Mike, if you would finish off and then I'll, I'll take back over. So over to you, Paul, first. Yeah, sure. And I think the quality was, um, again, as, as is usually the case, was very, very good. Um, uh, I think, um, uh, as always, it's, it's a pleasure to see people that have practiced the pitch and got it 
fine tuned to get it delivered within that five minutes. So credit goes to um, really to, to the to, to the boring team really to getting you guys prepared. That's quite a challenge to get stuff done in five minutes. I think the one takeaway that I would I would give, and and this is probably aimed at the two consumer propositions rather than the latter, uh, the, the uh, live tech games proposition is you just got to think about your route to market and how you're going to reach out to those customers and um, do so within the funding that is, you know, that is bought within your pitch deck. Um, I think Georgina made the point that really the ask financially was driven more by an SCIS consideration. Well, you can always launch around Georgina, which is SIS, SEIS and EIS combined and, and simply draws in the first 125k first. But I felt your proposition, it was easy to see how you're going to reach your market. It's quite a defined market. I think I made my point earlier, but that I thought that was less true of of Daniel's presentation. So I think you've got to think about how you are going to reach your audience with the amount of money that you've got raised in the in the um in the deck. But but otherwise I thought standard of presentation was probably the best I've seen um of, of the many borrowings I've attended. So well done everybody. Perfect. Thanks for the feedback, Paul. Over to you, Gainer, for your feedback. Um yeah. Uh, great event as usual, super interesting companies, well prepared pitches, clear and precise offerings. So um, absolutely well done, all three of you. Uh, I do think this is a great chance for entrepreneurs to, to get up there and shine. I think Nathan's just proven that with his natural ability to talk to the audience. I think there's a lot the others can take from that as well. Um, did feel a little bit of a lack of financials in, in some of the two earlier uh, pitches. Um, I think return on investment doesn't get um, picked up a lot. You know, they, you are pitching to investors, so what are you going to get them and when are you going to get it for them? I think that's always good to put that in, even if it's in the small print. Um, and discovery uh, is always the key. So whatever it is, we're in a very crowded um, technology world now. Um, you know, it's all about discovery. So a lot of emphasis on the marketing, the route to market, uh, and the costs of that. Don't be shy to put it there because I think, um, you know, you're being open and honest, uh, and that's what most of the money's needed for. So, um, but super duper, uh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for having me again. Perfect, thank you. And Alex, over to you. What's your first bull ring roundup? Yeah, and I think a lot. Uh, the other judges have summed up very well a lot of the positive comments. You know, I think I've been on a number of these in the last few years as well, and the quality does get better and better. So it's it's good to see that sort of succeed and come through here as well. Um, I think, you know, look, more numbers, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? You'll go to one country if you're pitching overseas and you'll be asked less in the US probably than you will be over here. I mean, again, it, it depends on the market that you're pitching to at the end of the day and how early, you know, someone's willing to invest. Is it for tax incentives? Is it for the fact they're investing in the team? Or, you know, is it because they understand the industry? Um, I think the, the thing that came through again uh, you know across all pitches was also the fact of again how much money how far is that going to get you you know where's it going to get you to the next round and and you know is this really enough to power through or on the reverse what what was the money you know powered to date um not much more i can say beyond that as a but had a really good time and thanks bd for the invitation no problem thank you over to you mike for the the, the presentation side of this and what people when we saw them in pitch perfect practice to where they are now and did they listen? Uh, uh, the Bulls have sort of summed up the, the pitching side of things and what's been included and what's not. So I'm not going to try and duplicate any of that. Uh, it's back to that whole point of you, you've got five minutes in this environment. Uh, five minutes is not a, a, a nice amount of time to allow you to get into stories, but you've seen their demonstrated passion and um, energy and charisma coming across. Two key things, when, when we get into a position of thinking, Quite often people go into that scary witch face. Um, look, you can use a different word there if you wish. And we go into the frowny face, the pointy finger, and aren't we very clever? And try and put on this deep voice. Um, and, and, and that disengages. And so the way we work with that is smiling. I want smiling. When, when we smile and we're authentic and our energy is there, it comes through totally. Because at the end of the day, it's the authenticity of the pitch. And that then means the investors they, they're going to like you or not. Chemistry comes into it. There are certain people who tune out and they turn around and say, well, because uh, you, you have an American accent like Bart or something like that, there's a reason they don't want to play with you. Whatever it is, it's chemistry, it's subjective. 
nothing you can do with it. You go with what matters. So that means be authentic, be uh, allow your personality to come through, which is what's been demonstrated today, because that's what makes you stand out from the crowd. And that's what's going to get investment. And that's what's going to find the right collaborative partners that are going to stay with you for the longer term. You're talking about shooting, shopping, games, everything today. Uh, everything was done authentically. There are people that will love what you've done. There'll be other people who turn around and say, not for me. It's not personal, but that's what you want. You want to be Marmite. You want to be clear. You, we don't want to be beige because that means mm, maybe. You've got to get people to tune in and get excited. And then that's where the investment comes from. Well done, all three of you today. It's been very, very powerful. My challenge back to everybody, and we, we talked about this, and I, I believe Nathan had an amazing pitch. Everybody was good, engaged. Mike, in fact, a smile. But the thing we missed in this was the story at the very beginning. Why are you doing this? You're thinking so. So what, what's the thing in that one minute? Tell us the story, because if Paul has never gone out shooting and he doesn't know anything about it, tell us about Paul's problem of organizing his first play pigeon shooters, whatever else it is, or the problem of getting his Chanel handbag that he needs for the weekend for, for Mrs. Heaven to do the thing. So give us a story. Don't forget the story because that draws us into your, the reason you created your problem. Everything else was great for all the pitches, except for the financials for some of them. Um, and leave us wanting more. Tell us a story, leave us wanting more because that's how you get us engaged and separate us from our money. So it's, it's very good. So Lauren, can we please have the next slide? Upcoming events for the bull ring. We have on the 12th of May and the 16th of June. We have one for one pitcher already for June. We have two pitchers for May. So if anybody's thinking about pitching, they like this, they know of somebody else that wants to do it. This is a showcase. It is free as long as you do what we ask you to do, which is promote, bring, come along and practice. We charge you 500 quid if not, but we don't want to charge anybody money. We just would rather have you work with us to make you have a better showcase. Um, we'll have more in the second half of the year, but this is what we have up to now. And we have a couple of live events, but those are sponsored events. Um, and that kind of just leaves me, we're going to go into breakout rooms after this. So you can have a conversation with Bulls or you can have a conversation with the pitchers. Um, and we do this walk fine. We, we say, if you want to work for the rest of your life, that's your business. If you don't, that's ours. No matter what it is you want to do, if you want to want to retire at some point in time or have fun or not do what you do currently, come talk to us. We, we love hosting this and we love showcasing great entrepreneurs. So thank you to the Bulls. Thank you to Paul, to Kaner, to Alex for his first time in. And thank you to our pitchers. And thank you very much to Mike for helping us out and Lauren for making all this stuff happen in the background. So thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy your the rest of your week and we'll see you again in May. Don't forget to sign up and pass along the good word about the bull ring. All the best. Okay, I'm gonna sort out the uh, breakouts now. Cool. Slowly, slowly. <laughs> it's okay. Here we go, here we go. Okay. I'm gonna sit down now. Oh. Yeah, I'll sit down. Right, I'm gonna open the room. Okay, cool. Okay. Says I should join number two. Okay, we should have should have a message to get go in the rooms. I've not had one yet, Lauren. Nah. Right, let's have a look. Wherever. Me. Pin there. Room one. Anybody else not had a message? Let me know. Hey, Lauren. Just coming back in. There was. Bart and I in there, two, two pitchers, um, uh, but none of the balls were in there. <laughs> so we need, needed one in there. Ah, I thought... That was in uh, room two. Ah, I thought that Paul was in there. 
have a little. He may, may have not quite made it. That might have been it. Okay. Let me. Do you want me in room one or room two? I might move Gainer. <laughs> she she might have started talking, but no. Hang on. Oh, I'm going to move her. Oh! Cool. You want to stick me back in a room as well, then? Yeah. Because there's no point me sitting next to Bart. No. Uh, I'll put you in room one, is it? Yep. Lovely. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.